what's happening is that I started out uh, in jazz, and so I developed, in fact, I came up in Memphis. Um, I, the blues was there, too, available to me, and gospel. So I had a chance to, to participate in all different types of music. So as an adult, uh, and having musical training from the conservatory, I wanted to like bring together all, a whole different sound of music. So it's like, um, and, 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 and dealing with my experiences, I had a chance to bring uh, <clears throat> the music to like another level and just experiment with it out with the people. And I would take the music that was very complicated chord-wise and I put very simple hooks on it and then would draw the, draw the ear. So uh, that's, that's, that's really what my thing is all about. Whoa, whoa, you got the best of my love. White in Chicago, which is where I'm from, and at the time I think he was living there, or maybe he was just playing with a group, a band, <clears throat> at uh, Charles Stepney's house, and they were looking for a group uh, for, I guess, Columba Productions. We didn't know then what it was. For his production company, he had Denise and Ramsey, and he wanted a girl group. Great group. Maurice. Uh uh, produced their records and and uh, uh, and we and we uh, it was his production, but we played on all of their records. We sat there and I played my songs, which I played on a Fendi Rose. The I don't want to lose your love was the first song I played for them, and uh, and then we played how can you stop? I've played about six or seven songs, and me and the girls sang them. Uh, Sheila and Jeanette, and uh, he said, "Wow!" Charles went, "Whoa." We used to call them Baby Earth, Wind and Fire, okay? Because Maurice produced them, basically like the fire. Emotions, Denise, Ramsey Lewis, and that was the tour, 1976. But we actually recorded in 1975 of December, and it came out in 76. And Flowers was the single that Al McKay and Maurice wrote. And then Reese did uh, Denise Williams. And Denise used to be with Stevie Wonder. But Nisi was doing all the demos for the emotions on the songs that Maurice would hear. And Stephanie said, well, we ought to record her too. And that's how she started recording with Reese. You know, Reese did some great productions too. Great, great productions, you know. I was, I was in the studio one day. Somebody said, cut that, that, that tape machine off. And I, and I hit the stop button. And all of a sudden I realized, uh, I can do this. Just like it dawned on me that, wow, you know, it's, it's not so hard. So I, I got into production, you know, by accident. I met Maurice in 1978 to meet him like on a working relationship, but uh, I met him in 76, very passingly in Omaha, Nebraska, in Des Moines, Iowa. It was a show, Brothers Johnson, Emotions, Earth, Wind and Fire. Wayne Vaughn, another great keyboardist and writer and really great, came up with the, the, the song Let's Groove. And it was a real simple song. You know, I don't, I, uh, I, we didn't think it was, uh, we didn't think of it in terms of a hit record at the time, because that was a Ray's album. We thought songs like Winner, You Are Winner was going to be the singles, and then, and Let's Groove ended up being really a, a great, great song for us. We still play today, yeah. As I was writing Let's Groove, I happened to have nobody over there, so I just got on drums, and I had this bass line, and I just played it, and blah, 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 the next thing I knew, put the Fender Rhodes on top of it and put the melody down and it turned into Let's Groove Tonight. Everything is metaphysical. So we would tend to try to employ that in the show. And uh, like you're coming out of pyramids and oh, yeah. pyramids exploding and, and going up in rocket ships and all this stuff. It was a Let's Groove tour, actually the last one. And we had like a, a stage was like, like a 45 degree angle or whatever. They were, they were having some problems with the stage or something like that, and it was a, a flatbed stage that went down this way. And so what had happened was Maurice or somebody spilled some Coca-Cola on the stage at Soundcheck, 
And then Maurice had a bright idea, because it was sticky, right? Sticky. So he goes, you know what? And he talked to our, the main stage guy. He said, Frank, I got a great idea, man, so we can get more traction. Just cover the whole stage with Coca-Cola. So we wouldn't fall to spray Coca-Cola all on the stage. And then on top of that, we had all the smoke bombs. So the guys came out, actually, First, it was just the three, Maurice, Philip, and, 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 and Ralph. And then this laser comes on, and we did the, the soundtrack. And as soon as it hits, Maurice was the first one that just had to do a 360. And he went, shaboom, right on the old bum. And then the other guys started coming up one at a time. Shabam, shaboom. And we were falling. Guys would fall. Every time somebody would fall. Sat would fall. Roland Bautista would fall. When they turned on the fog machines and the fog met the Coca-Cola, what happened? Sludge! We'd see somebody up, you know, be playing, you know, you got ten guys up there. All of a sudden, a body falls over here. Boom! Another body falls over here. Good thing we don't have, we didn't have YouTube then because it would have been the number one. And you could see Maurice went, oh, shit. Uh, that was a funny night. We laughed. We said, you know, we laughed about that one because the stage at the time, uh, and we had the drums in the middle that were going down, that were coming up out the ground. We had guys falling down there in the pit down there. It was, that was pretty funny. The, that was pretty funny. That was pretty funny. Well, outside of working with him, he's a, he's a great man. He, uh, the best big brother that a little brother could ever have. You know, he brought me out here. Uh, at that time when he brought me out here to Los Angeles, we didn't have any mentors. We didn't call them mentors at that time. We called them the cats. And, um, and it's just great just being around him and learning from him. And it was the best thing ever happened to me. Even, our, even my mother said it was the best thing. Our late mother, yes. They're still touring today. When they started touring, I didn't believe it. I said, what? They're still, how are they touring? Because we're always into what's current, but the people love that catalog. So it's good that the fellas can still go out and do tours and play, and people are still reminiscing or getting just first time introduced to the music.